Hey guys, it's Coach Sam here, and in this video we're going to be explaining the basic movements and how to get your robot started uh, with programming in Spike Prime. So a lot of people think programming is quite difficult or quite hard, and they have this image in their head about what programming is, and often it's like a guy at a computer hacking something. Um, this is probably a little bit of a misconception, because programming is simply a set of instructions. So with this set of instructions, all we're going to be doing is telling the robot what to do. Uh, essentially one by one by one, so move forward, turn, move forward, turn, move backwards. This is just a simple set of instructions that the robot will do. And programming this set of instructions, as you'll come to see later in the video, isn't actually that hard. So when you think about programming, this is all you need to remember, that it's just a set of instructions. Even with day-to-day -day life programming, for example, you may see when you press a microwave, you press a button and a certain thing happens. There's a program behind that that has a set of instructions that indicates to the button what it needs to do. With any set of instructions, uh, can you can imagine a cookbook recipe, um, when you're telling someone what to do or something what to do, it needs to be conveyed in a language. So you may tell your friend, go do this, this and this, please. Um, and they will understand that. Whereas if you go to a robot and you say, move forward, please, it's not going to move forward because you haven't given the set of instructions in the language it knows. So we're going to be using Spike Prime, the app, uh, which is the language that we're going to be using. It's based on Scratch, actually. And we're going to tell the robot exactly what it wants to do. And there are other languages as well that you can learn in the future. Things like Python, Java, C++, this kind of thing. Um, these languages essentially tell robots, computers, uh, motherboards, what to do. However, in this video, we're going to be going off quite the basics. Um, we're just going to be using the Spike Prime app to tell the robot exactly what to do. So let's head over to the computer. So I'm just going to open up the Spike Prime app. As you can see, I've got it open here. Once you've downloaded the app and you open it, this is essentially what comes up. The download process is quite easy. I'll put a link um, to the page below and you just follow those steps. It's pretty simple. When you first open the Spike Prime app, this is essentially what will come up. So it's like a get start page. Um, and over here, if you've just started, there'll be no projects. However, since I've been programming for a little bit, I have some old projects. It doesn't really matter because we're going to start from the basics. So we're going to go new program, new project, sorry, and we're going to click the word blocks because we're going to be programming in Scratch. As you can see, they also have the option to program in Python. Um, however, today for this video, it's just going to be word blocks. So we'll create the program, we won't name it. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as program one, project one. So with this programming uh, environment, as you can see, there's this big white space here. And over here, there are some blocks. Simply put where it says where program starts, this is where we're gonna start putting our program. Uh, and how do we create a program? Well, we have these helpful blocks here, which we're gonna choose from. And as you can see, I'll just do a quick demonstration. You can pull out and join, pull out and join. And this is the essential idea with Scratch. You can just pull out whatever block you want. You can edit this so you can make it turn right, you can make it turn left. You can change the number of rotations, degrees. We'll get into all of that later. So I'll just further explain this environment. I'll delete these blocks here because they're not necessary. So in this top button here, you can connect your robot. So I'm not going to connect the robot. However, it's very easy again. You can either use a cable, which we're going through right now. You just insert the cable and that's about it. Um, however, I also recommend trying to connect through Bluetooth. This can be a little bit annoying at times. Just remember, when you're first connecting it, make sure you click this button over here, the Bluetooth button. It'll then give out a few beep beeps, beep beeps, and you'll see your robot come here and you just click it and that's it. Uh, sometimes Bluetooth can be a bit tricky, um, but it shouldn't be too hard. So once your robot is connected, you'll see all of your ports, all of your motors, all of your sensors. Um, so that's where that's gonna be in this top left corner over here. Uh, in the bottom right corner over here, we have the program. So we're going to just be basically running on program zero. That's just all the number that's going to come up. Um, you don't really need to worry about the rest of them. Just make sure you're on zero and that'll be fine. Uh, we have a stop button. So if you want to run your robot, you press the start button. And if you want to stop it, press the stop button. We also have some little commands over here. So if you want to zoom to zoom into the screen, uh, that's this button, zoom out, zoom in, and then also um, backs and backwards and forwards. However, control Z, and I think command up Y also works or control up Y if you're using a Windows laptop. Uh, I just prefer to use control Z to be honest, but it's completely up to you. If you prefer the arrows, then that's good. Now, the last thing I'm yet to explain is this little yellow button over here. So this block, when program starts, it's essentially the play block. Every program needs one play block. The reason being is the robot needs to know what, what it needs to do at the start. So with any set of instructions, there needs to be an opening set uh, an opening command where it'll say do this 
and then from that command there's another one and another one and another one so it's basically like this is um, the first line of code and then there'll be another block underneath and that's the next instruction and so on um, the other thing is it doesn't really make sense to have two run program starts so make sure you only have one the reason being the zero will just get confused as to which one to follow right so you can imagine if you have a string of blocks over here and a string of blocks over here, the robot really won't know. Um, and your program will just break, it won't do anything. So make sure you only have one, and make sure you always have that one. If you don't have this at the start of your program, nothing will happen. Now, the last thing I want to explain before actually digging into the programs is going into this button over here. So over here, we have some things called extensions. Um, you can do some really you know, cool things with Spike Prime. However, the main thing is we need to have this more motors box checked and more movement box checked. The reason being is the basic um, panels or the tabs, as we'll get, get to explain, aren't that advanced and aren't really good enough for you know competitions like uh, FLL um, or different stuff like that. So we definitely want to have these checked. Once you have these checked, you can come down here and you'll see you have these extra blocks. So these blocks are laid out pretty simply. You can see if you want to control individual motors, you go to the blue one. If you want to control both motors, it's pink. And then from there, there are some other cool things like light and sound. We're not really going to get into too much of that today. Uh, events is really important as well as control. Sensors as well. All of these are quite important. Um, you know, op operators, variables, my blocks. Um, all of these are extremely important. And if you continue watching in my video series, um, this is the first part of a longer part of the series. Uh, we'll get to actually use most of these um, tabs and see what each of these blocks do. Um, and then, of course, more movements and more motors. So we're going to be mainly working out of this today. Now let's start talking about the actual programming. So with programming a robot for you know a competition or just for fun, there are two main things you need to know. You need to know how to move forward and how to turn. So this robot needs to be able to move perfectly straight forward and perfectly straight backwards as well as turn left or right. So we're going to be covering those two things in this video. Thankfully, it's actually really easy. So the first thing we need to do is go to this movement tab over here. In this movement tab, we're going to pull out our first block, which is set movement motors to A and B. So what this is, is essentially you have wheels on your robot. And each of these wheels it could be medium motors or large motors, but they're essentially connected to ports at the back over here. The robot needs to know which of these ports are being in use. So right now I have mine selected to B and F. So I have my left one connected to B and my right one connected to F. So over here, A is in the left position over here. Um, we're going to make that B. And then on the right position, we have F. So let me just redo that over again. Let's go B, B and F. As you can see, you just play around with this a little bit. Um, it can be a little bit funny sometimes, but it'll really help to make sure that you have your right one connected to you know this right side here and your left wheel connected to this left side here. Um, also, this will actually happen automatically if you connect your robot via Bluetooth or a cable. Um, it should automatically pop up. You already see that your, your motors are correct. However, if they're not, just spin one of the wheels and whatever uh, number moves, just turn that on, whatever number moves, um, that's what will work. So I'll turn it off because it's almost out of charge. All right, so that's our first block. The next block we're going to use is actually going to be in the more movement tab um, because we're going to do something a little bit, you know, uh, important. So set motors to break at stop. If we press here, again, you have all the options. So hold position and coast. I'll explain one of these, all of these one by one. So coast is essentially if the robot's moving, when the programming is stopped, so let's say it's a straight. When the program stops, it'll have a gradual um, stop as to when it finishes because the motors still have power. So when the motors have power, even if you tell the robot to stop, that power will go from 100 to zero. And in that time, there'll be a slow movement forward. This isn't very good because it leads to inaccuracies in your program, so that's why we don't really use coast. There's also break. So what break does, break will essentially, when the robot moves and it goes from 0 to 100 and now it's moving at 100 speed, when the speed goes back down to 0, um, it's not going to be a gradual stop, it'll put actually a negative power in it. So it'll go like this and then kind of jerk backwards a little bit like that and come to kind of like a stop, not necessarily as precise, but it will definitely be breaking and you'll feel like a bit of a hard break when you see it. Uh, hold position, however, is the best. Hold position is the most accurate in terms of coming to a stop when you want it to. So whenever the program stops, the robot will try to stop at that location exactly. So that's why we normally use hold position for everything. However, if you see your robot, you know, maybe it's uh, a little bit more heavy, it still has some trouble stopping at the exact position. Brake uh, applies more power to stop it. 
However, for our basic case, we're just going to be using hold position. So that was the setup to actually create our program. Now let's talk about the movement part. Uh, the movement part is actually really, really simple, as I've been saying over and over again, but here's, here it is. So basically, when you're moving, we're going to be using the same block to move forward, to move back, and to turn. And it's this block over here. So it's in the more movement tab again. So, you know, just come down to here. And then over here, you can see it says move straight for 10 centimeters at 50 speed. When you're moving, there are essentially three things you need to worry about. Firstly, if you're going straight, so you can go straight forward or straight backwards. Um, you can also go left and right, so a bit of a curve, but we want to go straight. The next thing is the distance, so how far you want to go. That's where this 10 centimeter part comes from. Uh, and then lastly is the power, so the speed at which it goes through. Speed and power are two different things, so I may use them interchangeably, but for now, speed is power and power is speed, but they're actually slightly different things. You don't need to worry about that though. These are the three things we need to worry about, whether it's going straight, how long for, and at what speed. And as you can see, these three parameters are right here for us to use. So we're gonna go straight for 10 centimeters, we actually have a few options, so we can use inches, um, if you're in America using the Imperial system, rotations, degrees, and seconds. So we're going to be using degrees in this video, and I'll explain why. So centimeters, if you haven't calibrated you know, um, the distance between your motors properly, then centimeters won't be of any use to you whatsoever, because it won't actually go the correct uh, number of centimeters. So you know, degrees usually is the best way to go in terms of getting an accurate number that works every single time. And obviously, you know, if you're in America and using the pro system or metric system, pretty much everywhere else, I think, um, you know, it's the most neutral, I guess. The other thing is, I'll explain the difference between degrees and rotations. So rotations is essentially, if you put one rotation, this wheel is going to turn 360 degrees. That's all rotations is. Um, and if you put degrees, well, we can just put 360 here, and that will equal one rotation. However, you know, if you're trying to make things accurate, you may have to go 450 degrees, right? And that's what, 1.25 um, rotations. It's a lot easier just to put 450 here instead of 1.25. And 1.25 is a simple example. You may have to put 1.259. Right, it can get pretty chaotic if you're using rotations. So that would be rotations because you want to go 450 degrees. Whereas we just use degrees and we say, you know what, 450 degrees, it'll go a solid amount forward. And that's it. If it's too far less, you know, if it's not enough, just increase the 450 to 850. Or if it's too far forward, decrease it. Um, so degrees is a pretty good range of um, a number to measure how far you want to go forward. And at speed, look, in general, you don't want your speed to go too crazy. I know I said 100 before, but we normally travel at 40 to 50% speed for accurate cases. You'll see, if you want to test it out, go at 100. Uh, pedal to the metal, go all the way, and you'll see a robot, you know, it won't exactly go in a straight line. It may break at the end. Um, there'll be different inaccuracies, to be honest. And, you know, at higher speeds, uh, it's more of a joyride than, you know, a precision task. Uh, so we normally go at 40% speed. Now, if you want to go straight for a certain amount of time, you actually notice that 450 isn't a great deal. In terms of the robot, it'll probably move like, you know, a small amount. That's why in this video, we're going to be going 1000 degrees. 1000 in general, you know, it's actually like, it's not uncommon to go into the thousands, especially if you're in a FLO map. It will probably go travel, traverse you at least, you know, a third or half the map. Um, so it's, you know, don't be scared to go big numbers. It's quite normal. So we've created our program. The last thing we need to do is put a stop block because the robot now needs to know it needs to stop. So let's go to the movement and stop moving. That's it. This is our program. What will this program do? So this program will essentially go straight for a thousand degrees. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, the robot simply went straight. Now you may be saying, well, that's a lot of work just to go straight. You know, I have to do this over and over again. Well, actually, it's just this block over here that's doing all the work. One, two, and three, the rest of the other three blocks aren't actually doing much except for setting up. They're important to have, but they don't change the, what the robot's doing. Um, so if you want to go straight again, just get this block out, control C, control V, and, the, uh, and it pops up. And this will now go straight twice. So setting the setup of this is very important. Just get the setup out of the way. And then the programming is fairly simple. Something that I want to explain is now moving backwards. So we've moved forwards. How do you make your robot move backwards? Uh, quite simply, just put a negative on speed. 
So if you put negative 40% speed, it will move backwards. You can also put a negative on degrees, but only one or the other. So don't put a negative here and here because two negatives cancel out to make a positive. It'll just go forward again. Make only a negative here in degrees or take out this negative if you don't want to put it there and put it in speed. Personally, I just find it's easier to put it in speed uh, because also for later programs, we kind of use speed as our measure for forwards and back. Um, so I prefer to use speed as our negative movement um, and that will travel backwards. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, it simply went backwards. Now, forwards, backwards, we've covered that. We said there was one more, you know, kind of command that we want to learn, and that's turning left or right. So again, it's this same block over here, and you can see how powerful this block is, because not only can it move forward, backwards, it can also turn. The way we do this is essentially we take this straight, and you saw this before, we make the steering all the way to negative 100 or positive 100. So you can see right, a right turn is 100, um, you know, steering power, and a left turn is the other way, negative 100 steering power. Uh, the only thing I will say is though, 1000 is quite a bit for a turn. It'll just be doing donuts essentially uh, for a little bit. So normally, you know, uh, different turns have obviously different degrees. Don't be confused and think that just putting 90 here will give you a 90 degree turn like that. It won't. Because remember, this the degrees that you're putting in here is the rotation of the wheel. So a 90 degree movement of the wheel, if this is 360, a 90 degree is probably like that. And in terms of the robot, it's just like that, you know, just a little movement here. Um, so we normally don't be confused on the degrees of the robot as the degrees of the wheel spinning. If this is confusing to you, um, just try it out, right? See what happens when you put 90 in there. You'll see that the robot only turn a little bit. What do you do next? Make the number higher. So if 90 isn't a perfect 90 degree t uh, turn, let's try 140 degrees. I've tested this out before, as you come to see. And so for a perfect 90 degree turn to the left, we've put 140 degrees at negative 40 speed is still fine. And we've put left here. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, it turned perfectly uh, 140 degrees to the left. Uh, let's now do to the right. So let's go to the right and let's see what that looks like. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, uh, we've turned left and turned right. If you want to do a bigger turn, again, you may not want to do 90. Maybe you want to go, you know, a way bigger turn, maybe 180. Uh, just increase this number to 200, right? Keep this number, don't worry about whether it's degrees, whether it's rotations, you know, you don't need to worry about the unit. At the end of the day, once you have your measure for how far it's going, just trial and error up and down to see how you like and, you know, to see where the perfect number is. It'll take some time to tune this out, you know, uh, but once you gauge your robot, once you know your robot, these numbers will almost be instantaneous in your head. You'll be like, yep, I know the range it needs to go. Um, and it's actually quite fun, you know, trying to guess um, the correct uh, number in the end. Some people are better than others, so maybe you have a competition or something. Okay, so we've learned how to go straight, we've learned how to go backwards, we've learned how to turn left and right. That is the end of this video because you now know how to do basic movement in Spike Prime. It's that simple. It's essentially just one block that does everything and then a few other blocks that kind of help it work together in a really great program. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, this was the first video in a series of videos. So this is just the start uh, of your programming journey. Um, just basic movement is uh, the start of what you're going to learn because you come to notice that your turns may not be as accurate as you want them or going straight, it's always gonna have a slight veer. How do you solve this? Well, you learn more advanced skills, advanced programs. You use things like sensors and motor rotation. Continue watching the videos in the series uh, and you'll learn everything you need to know to create accurate programs using your Spike Prime robot. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.